We have reached the last episode for blockchain technology. For the past two episodes, we have covered what blockchain is, some examples of why it is popular, some of the advantages and types of blockchains available. Today, I'm here to explain how blockchain works. The concept may sound too technical, but I will explain it in layman's terms so you can understand it. In order to understand how blockchain works, let us look at some examples. Blockchain technology uses hashing and encryption, usually SHA-256 to secure the data. Hashing is the method used for compressing data. It creates a code for the data using a hash algorithm. The code represents a string of characters, which act as a fingerprint of that file. Fingerprints hold a surprising amount of information. Information such as names, faces, and addresses. Similar to hashing, it compresses data into a small number of characters. No matter the size of the input, you always get a fixed length output when hashing. I will explain how it works. This demonstration will use the 256-bit secure hashing algorithm known as SHA-256. It is a common hashing algorithm that is also used by Bitcoin. As you can see, though the messages are different in length, they all have 64 character hashes and this can be used as a key. Through the SHA-256 algorithm, the sender's address, which is the public key, the receiver's address, the transaction, and his or her private key details are transmitted. Once the data is verified, it is encrypted and sent around the world. With SHA-256, you cannot hack the hash encryption, so sender or recipient authentication is easy. Let us take a look at proof of work versus proof of stake, which is commonly used in blockchain technology. Blockchains synchronize data and stay secure with proof of work and proof of stake algorithms. Each node in the network uses these algorithms to determine which block of transactions to add next. Despite their differences, both mechanisms have proven to be effective at maintaining blockchains. In contrast, blockchain blocks are made up of four main headers. Number one, previous hash. This hash address tells you where to find the previous block. Number two, transaction details. The details of every transaction that needs to occur. Number three, nonce a random number used in cryptography to identify the block's hash address. Number four, hash address of the block. The three things I listed just now, previous hash, transaction details, and nonce are transmitted through a hashing algorithm. It then gives you a 256-bit, 64-character value, which you refer to as a block's hash, as explained earlier on in hashing. People all over the world use computational algorithms to find the right hash value. A transaction completes when a predetermined condition is met. In simpler words, blockchain miners solve a mathematical puzzle, known as a proof-of-work problem. Whoever solves it first gets a reward. Mining involves adding transaction details to a public ledger. Although it is associated with Bitcoin, it is actually used for other blockchain technology. Without a central server, mining generates a blockchain hash that cannot be forged. Besides storing monetary details, blockchains also keep track of products. You can track items you purchase online from the moment they are shipped to delivery. It is useful because it can identify the source of contamination if there is an outbreak. It is just one way blockchains can store crucial data. Blockchain technology has made a lot of things possible, including providing financial services such as digital wallets to many people, blockchain's main use and reason for development. As a result, it has offered microloans and micropayments to people in less than ideal economic conditions, thus reviving the global economy. It is trust that matters most in international transactions. The former way to bridge trust gaps involved hiring lawyers. 
trust has been changed radically by blockchain. Several organizations are scarcely funded and corrupt. With blockchain, people and organizations can avoid unreliable third parties in such cases. The Internet of Things, or IoT, is already teeming with smart devices that drive your cars, drive your ships, manage trash collection, and organize traffic safety. This is where blockchain comes in. With blockchain technology, we can improve operations and ensure data accuracy through smart contracts to solve all these problems. Generally, blockchain technology creates decentralized peer-to-peer -peer networks for companies and apps. Users can use it for tolls and parking. Healthcare industries can also use it to store sensitive patient data. Health organizations can create a centralized database and only share information with the right people. Blockchain technology enables consumers to conduct private transactions. In order to proceed with these types of transactions, some details need to be worked out between both parties. Things like, what are the terms and conditions of the exchange? Does everything make sense? How soon is the exchange? How long until it is done? What's the right time to stop the exchange? By researching the blocks in the chain, all parties can quickly find solutions to these questions as blockchain technology uses a shared ledger on a decentralized network. We have reached the end of our three-part series on blockchain technology. Let us recap on what you have learned throughout these three episodes. In episode one, we have covered what blockchain is and why it is popular. In episode two, I've discussed some of the advantages and types of blockchains available. Today's episode is about how blockchain works and how it is used. This concludes our three-part series on Introduction to Blockchain Technology. I appreciate you taking the time to watch these three episodes, and I hope you will find it useful. Keep an eye out for upcoming posts in which I will simplify financial topics for you. Please like, follow, and share. Until next time, ciao!